Do you feel like your iPad has untapped potential? Over the past four years, I've used mine from everything from running projects to creative brainstorming. Along the way, I've discovered features that can transform how you work, play, and stay organized. So in this video, I'll show you my top 10 essential tips to help you discover features that often go unnoticed, but that will completely transform how you use it. And to kick things off, let's look at a simple feature that will help you find exactly what you need in seconds. Now, if you aren't already using this feature, then you're missing out. It's a feature on your iPad that can do more than what you think. It's not just a simple search tool. Spotlight is what Apple has called the feature for searching your iPad for, well, just about everything. Now, I've been using iPads for years. Spotlight's definitely one of the most underrated tools. Let me show you the power of Spotlight. Firstly, to open Spotlight from your home screen, swipe down and the Spotlight search appears here at the top. So here we can do a number of things. We can use it as a calculator. Simply type in your calculation query and you'll get an instant answer. It can also do conversions. So if we want to convert, let's say euros to dollars, we just type this in and we get the answer. And this also works just as well for measurements. So let's find out how many kilometers are in 10 miles, for example. And of course we can use Spotlight to search for just about anything. If we type in what we want to find, Spotlight will bring up apps we've installed, contacts, messages, emails, files, notes, photos, and just about anything it finds on our device, as well as suggested online results. When I'm using my iPad, I often find this is the quickest way to find exactly what I need. Now Spotlight is great for finding what you need fast, but what about navigating between apps or tasks without effort? And that's where these handy gestures come in. And it starts with this. When you're using multiple apps, you don't need to keep pressing the home button to return to the home screen and then press the app icon each time. This is one of my favorite tricks for multitasking efficiently. For instance, when I'm researching a script, I often have Safari, Notes and ChatGPT open at the same time and swiping between them keeps me in the zone without breaking my flow. And it's as easy as this. Think of this as flipping through the pages of a book. Simply swipe your finger left or right here at the bottom and it effortlessly moves between your recent apps. Another way to see the apps you have opened is, again, from the bottom, either from within an app or just from your home screen, just swipe up and keep swiping up. Your apps will shrink and you'll see all the apps that you've recently opened. It shows six at a time here and you can swipe the screen to scroll through even more. Okay, now let's look at some nifty gestures when you're using the keyboard. Let's say you're typing a note or email and you want to easily undo. It's as easy as using three fingers on the screen and swipe them to the left to undo or right again to redo. Another way to undo is to tap the screen with three fingers at once. Do this and the menu appears at the top. Here you have the undo and redo options, but also if you've already copied some text, you can paste it. But how do you copy something in the first place? Well, you can use one finger to double tap to select a word, and then you can copy from the menu. Or if the keyboard is showing something, you can choose from the icons here on the left. And talking of using the keyboard, when you want to access the gray characters above the letters, instead of using the key here to switch the keyboard, just make a short swipe down on the key and it'll instead give you the character. This is really handy for speeding up your typing when you want to add, say, numbers or punctuation. And did you know when you finish a sentence and are moving on to the next one, just double tap the space bar and it'll automatically add a full stop and a space ready to move on. Now, sometimes when typing, you might feel that the keyboard takes up too much of the screen. Well, we can address that by pinching on the keyboard and it will shrink to this smaller one. Here, you can also move it around the screen by dragging from the bottom. To make it bigger again, just do the opposite on the keyboard to expand your fingers out. With gestures mastered, let's move on to something even faster. Sometimes you might want to just jot down something to remember for later. A way to jot down things and thoughts instantly without fumbling through apps. And we can do this using quick notes. To make this easy, there's a simple gesture we can make. Just swipe in from the bottom left and a quick note window will appear ready for you to quickly jot down whatever you want. I've used quick notes to save ideas mid-meeting, capture to-dos on the go, and even jot down video ideas before I forget them. This may be enabled by default, but you can access a setting for this by going into settings, apps, notes, scroll down to quick notes and then corner gestures. Then here you can enable the corner gestures and set what you want each corner to open. Interestingly here as well, you'll also see the option for screenshot, which takes me on to the next gesture because this can be really handy. It works on your iPad for any app you have open. So it's as simple as it sounds, and screenshots aren't just for capturing what's on your screen. They're perfect for saving online recipes, annotating work presentations, or even capturing entire web pages for later reference. And let me show you how. First, to take a screenshot, just swipe from the bottom right, and a screenshot is taken. 
Here you can then resize the area you want to capture. You can also use the markup tools to draw or annotate on the image. You can even press this icon here to highlight text in the image, which you can then copy or perform other functions on with the standard text options when you highlight a selection. When you're finished, you press done, and then you can choose where to save the image, or you can also use a share sheet to share the screenshot with another app. Another extra feature to know is when you take a screenshot of a web page, you get this extra option here at the top, allowing you to choose the screen or just the entire full web page. And this can be really useful if you want to capture the contents of a page that's longer than the screen shows at once. Now screenshots are great for capturing moments, but if like me you need to work across multiple apps at once, let me show you how multitasking can streamline your workflow with a feature that's called Split View. To activate Split View, press the three dots at the top of the app that you're in and then choose Split View and you'll see it moves that app to the side so you can then choose the second app you want on the screen. You can then also adjust the position of each app by sliding from the centre to make one larger than the other to suit the task that you're doing. Another option we have is slide over, so we can again select the three dots, and this makes one app appear as though it's floating over the other. And doing this, we can then adjust the position and slide this floating app on top. But as well as split view and slide over, we can instead use what Apple also calls stage manager. First head into settings, then multitasking and gestures, and here's the option to choose stage manager. You can see it's enabled instantly, and now the window we're using has shrunk slightly. With other apps, we already have open showed down the left-hand side. With Stage Manager, we can have multiple apps up front and resizing them by dragging from the corner where you see this black corner indicator. To add extra apps, just drag them onto the screen, either from the main app bar or from one that is open at the side. Once you have this group of apps, they will remain grouped together and you can then switch from this group to other apps or groups of apps. This might be useful when you're using a number of apps at once as it allows you to have them arranged and makes it quick to switch between them. One final thing is we still have options here with the three dots where we can make the app full screen. Use this to add another window, minimize or close. Now sometimes there might be a website that I want to go back to regularly and I want to have instant access to without having to first open Safari. And we can turn a website into an instant app icon. First in Safari, when you're on the web page you want, press the share sheet and then choose add to home screen. You can then give the icon a name and then press add and now you'll have an icon for that web page which you can move to wherever you need on the screen. Now I often use my iPad to review and edit my photos. Sometimes I might want to adjust some settings. So if we say open this one here, I might want to adjust the brightness and saturation. Now maybe I took a number of photos all at the same location. So I want to do these same edits to these two. But instead of manually doing them all individually, I can go to the first photo, select the menu here and copy edits. And then in the next photo, just paste edits. And those same edits will be applied. This is really handy when you might have batches of photos all taking at the same time that are similar. Now editing your photos is one thing, but what if you could showcase them right on your home screen? Imagine opening your iPad to see a rotating slideshow of your family, your pets or favourite trauma memories right there on the screen. Widgets can bring your favourite moments to life and add a personal touch to your iPad. This is where we can use a photo widget. First press and hold on the screen till the icons start wiggling and then press edit here in the corner. Then choose add widget. We now get a list of lots of widgets we can potentially add. Scroll down to photos and then we can choose the type of the selection of photos we want to see as well as the widget size. So here I'll move along and choose this size album and add widget. Now tap the widget so we can now choose one of our albums and now we'll see photos from that album appear on the screen. Widgets are just the start. Let's take a closer look at how you can fully customise your iPad's home screen to suit your style and boost your productivity. First, go back into the edit mode by pressing the screen, then press edit and choose customise. We now get these options which allow us to choose small or large icons. Note here the large icons don't have titles. We can select this sun icon here to darken the brightness. Then we have options for the light and dark mode. When we switch to dark, all the icons change and this affects some apps appearance too. With automatic, it will choose whether to use light or dark mode. Or we can also add a tinted look to all our icons. And this gives us the option to choose a color and saturation for the tint. This can be great if you want a particular color scheme and look for your own iPad. Your iPad is now set up to work for you, but did you know many of these tips also apply to your iPhone? Over the years, I've fine-tuned how I use my Apple devices to save time and stay productive, and I've discovered some amazing iPhone secrets too. In this next video, I'll show you hacks that'll save you hours every week and make your life so much easier.